video podcast that is recorded as live video for new and expecting moms. And the mission is to have fearless conversations about pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. So I am really excited to bring my guest on this morning. We're going to be talking about working with a doula. So but just a couple of announcements. You can find the entire episode library of the Confident Momcast that we've recorded so far over at theconfidentmomcast.com. And you can now also find the audio version of the Confident Momcast on iTunes, Spotify, and we're working on all the other players as well. So you can find the audio version because I know as a mom of any age kids, you are multitasking. And so we want to make this content readily available for you to consume however it works for you. So I'm going to bring my guest, Abigail Condon, on. She's going to be talking about why she chose to work with a doula, how to know if working with a doula is right for you. We're going to kind of break down some misconceptions about what people think a doula is versus what they actually do, um, just to help you prepare for your birth experience and making decisions that are going to be right for you, whether you're having a hospital birth, a home birth, a medicated birth, an unmedicated, unmedicated birth. We want to make this a safe place where we can have these conversations. And if you're watching live um, while we're recording this, you can ask questions at any time um, over in the question box and we'll answer those um, either during the content or at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Abigail on. Just turn your video on. Hey, Abigail, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Tiffany. Will you just introduce yourself and share a little bit about how many kids you have, just kind of a little bit about your story? Sure. Um, So again, my name is Abigail. Um, I've been married to my husband, David, for three years now, and we just had our first son in February. He just turned six months old. Uh, It's totally true what they say about time flying. (laughs) It goes so fast. Sure. Um, But yeah, we're really excited to welcome him into our family. Oh my gosh, I love it. And he's so, he's so cute. Um, I would love for you to start by just sharing um, when you started thinking about your birth, um, if you waited until after you were pregnant to start thinking about, all right, what do I want this experience to be like? Or if you are uh, someone who's thought about it long in advance and you kind of already had an idea, like what was that like for you? Sure. Um, I think like a lot of people, I went into pregnancy just kind of like a little bit overwhelmed with the thought of birth. Like it's this very intense, you know, thing that's that's going to happen to my body. It was my thought. Um, and I wanted to make it just as good of an experience as possible. And I met, you know, a lot of my friends have had babies and some of them have had babies and they're like, oh, it was terrible. And other ones have had babies and they're like, oh, it was the best thing ever. And some of them have had both experiences. Um, so I was actually talking to my friend Liz before I got pregnant, you know, Liz. Um, and she shared how with her first birth, she didn't have a great experience. And then with her second and third, she did. And it was because she had a doula and because she switched from, um, like a medical doctor to a midwife. Um, so I totally trust (laughs) Liz a lot and her experience really like started to inspire me. Like, okay, this doesn't have to be something that's, you know, scary or frightening. Like I can go into this feeling prepared, um, feeling supported. So I started looking into from there, I picked, um, midwives, at, it's called the Midwives at McGee, so it's midwives that practice inside of a hospital um, okay. as my providers. Um, and then I also picked, and then I decided I wanted to pick a doula um, to support my birth process. So really the reason I went with midwives, and um, I think my midwife put it best, is because doctors sort of take, they take more of a medical approach to pregnancy and birth. They say, okay, pregnancy is this thing that happened to you, and we need to take care of it and take care of you, which isn't a bad way to view it. You know, it's just the way they do it. Whereas midwives see it more like, okay, pregnancy is a normal process for a woman and we just want to support that process. So just sort of a different viewpoint. And I like the idea of someone not seeing me as like a patient, but seeing me as like a fellow woman who's just going through pregnancy and entering this new phase of life. So I guess I started thinking about it like it's always been in the back of my mind, but it was as we were like starting to try to get pregnant that um, it really became something that I, I did a little bit more research on. Yeah, for sure. I actually like love, I love that perspective that they gave on like the difference between one is not right and one is not wrong. It's just their perspectives are going to be different and that's going to affect the like care that you have. Mm -hmm. So you worked with midwives that were part of a hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, Did you, what was your research process and even finding, did you just um, ask friends who they worked with? I mean, obviously you talked to Liz, who was that kind of your 
Um, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people use like word of mouth, like who did you use as a midwife or did you just start on Google where it was like midwives yeah. near me or like how can somebody start to do the research just in finding what kind of like midwives are even right near them? I yeah. Guess. So for me, it was really just important that they were covered by my insurance. <laughs> so very, uh, very important. Unfortunately for me, my insurance actually changed right when I got pregnant. So I wouldn't have been able to use midwives, I think, at all with my previous insurance. Oh, um, but because we switched, um, the midwives at McGee were going to be covered under my new insurance, which I was so happy about. I was so yeah, happy we switched when we did. Um, yeah, so that was important to me. I don't think that my insurance would have allowed me to do a birth center, and I don't know that I would have necessarily picked that had I had the option. And I know that my um, my insurance wouldn't cover a home birth at all. Um, okay. So it was, it was really just important to me that it was covered. <laughs> and then I had yep. that positive referral from uh, my friend Liz. They have an office. Um, in the city, but they also have one a little bit further south. So it was e pretty easy for me to get to my appointments. Um, it was on a good day of the week for me. So it just sort of like all kind of fell into line once I got that one referral and found out my insurance covered it. <laughs> That's so great. When you went to, um, to meet with the midwives, did you have, <clears throat> were you able to choose which midwife was yours? Do they work as just as like, if somebody has absolutely no idea what that's even like, do you choose a midwife? Like you choose your specific doctor or you choose to work with the midwife team and they kind of assign you who's available. What's that like? Right. So I worked, uh, they have like a big team of midwives. I'm not hundred percent sure how many, it's probably at least 10 or 12. Um, okay. but then you can, at my office that I went to, it was actually only open one day a week. So I saw the same person pretty much all the time. I only end up meeting like four of the midwives total. Um, but then whoever is on call that day is the one who delivers your baby, um, which for me, it actually worked out really well. <laughs> the doctor I saw the most, or not the doctor, sorry, the midwife I saw the most actually ended up being on call the night that I delivered. So that was cool. Oh, that's amazing. All right. So working cool. with the midwives at the hospital, mm -hmm. do when you went into labor with Joseph, did you go to the hospital just like you would as like a when people think of a typical hospital birth or do the midwives have their own center that's kind of connected to the hospital? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the midwives just have um, the midwives and the OBs at McGee share the same like delivery space. So they'll have separate like rooms and, you know, so there are like midwife rooms in there. Um, like OB rooms, but it's all in the same place. It's all pretty much the same type of care. They just, it's just the way that they treat you. The way that they view the practice of, you know, supporting women through labor is just different. Yeah, for sure. And I'm assuming because they, um, one thing I hear, you know, so frequently is when you're choosing a hospital um, and you want, you know, certain things are important to you as far as working with a midwife, like choosing a hospital that has a great relationship with their oh, yeah. midwives. So mm -hmm. it sounds like this is one of those hospitals where you work with a midwife, but you're at the hospital and they have a great relationship. Mm -hmm. And so there's not like a tension between oh, yeah. like, you know, you want the, certain things are really important to you in your birth experience and the hospital really just, um, I think, you know, someone recently explained it as like, it's not that they're, you know, against what you believe mm -hmm. or against what you want. It's just mm -hmm. not typical protocol. And so their routine right. is off and there's, you know, there's, all of their their checklists are are getting kind of so it sounds like you had a, they had a great relationship right. yeah yeah the ob's are like down the hall in case anything happens you know in case they become necessary but they pretty much i think just let the midwives do what they do and like if they have to get called in it's from my experience i didn't have to have an ob called in but from what i've heard and everything that i experienced it's just really seamless nice and i'm sure especially as like a first time um expecting mom that that was like a a good like reassurance of mm -hmm. knowing that like this is what I want and this is my like what I want for my birth plan but if something were to go differently I'm not at a place where that couldn't you know that help was not close by so yeah um yeah. what was what's the difference between a midwife and a doula for those who might be listening and not really sure what the difference yeah. is so you say that um you're working with a midwife you're the midwives actually were, are part of the hospital, so you're giving birth at, at a hospital. Mm -hmm. What does a midwife do versus a doula? Right, so the main difference between midwives and doulas is that doulas do not provide any medical care. They don't provide medical interpretation, they don't provide medical advice. They're strictly there to support the mother to help her make informed decisions. Um, they can help with positioning that you know can theoretically help speed up labor and you know overcome some of the obstacles, but when it comes to anything you know, reading the fetal heartbeat, you know, your blood pressure. Um, 
IVs, like none of that is done by a doula. They're completely non-medical. Interesting. Did you choose your doula way in advance or was this something that you chose last minute? Like how did that, right. um, how did that work as far as like who was going to be? Cause I just, I think that that like anything, I mean, it's mm-hmm. going to be the same with your midwife or your doctor, or whoever your experience will be completely like something you might look for in a doula might be something completely different than what somebody else might look for. Right. So what was that process like just in choosing what you wanted? <laughs> So um, if I could do it again, I would have spent more time. I would have picked my doula much, much earlier. Um, okay. I almost picked my doula when I was like one month pregnant, but I felt like, no, that's that's a little rushed, which in retrospect, it wouldn't have been, um, but I felt that way. So I waited, but then I hit a really busy patch and I couldn't get in to see them until I was eight months pregnant. I think I was two months from my due date when I finally went to, um, um, it's a, a meet the doulas meeting. So okay. I got a referral to a group called the Birth Doulas of Pittsburgh from my friend Mel. Um, and she said, they have a bunch of people you can pick from. Um, this I really liked my experience. And I was like, okay, I'll check them out. So I went to this meeting. Um, they all introduced themselves, they answered some questions. And my husband and I kind of quickly looked and I said, okay, is there anyone you don't want me to go talk to and pursue a relationship with? And he mentioned a few people that he just didn't feel like he would jive with. Um, Cause that was important to me that my husband liked the doula that I picked. Are you still there, Tiffany? I think we froze. <laughs> You're not moving. So I'm not sure if I'm there. Tiffany, so I'm going to shoot you a DM because I can't see you if you can see me. Um, okay, if you can hear me, then I guess. Oh, there you're back. Okay, thanks, Gigi. <laughs> it froze on me, but I was hoping you were still able. That's happened before, but people were able to still hear you. So okay. I couldn't hear what you said, but everyone else did. So just for like a short recap, I got um, it froze on me when you said that the birth pit. Birth Doula Network Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. <laughs> Birth Doulas of Pittsburgh. Um, you got referred to by your friend Mel, and that's where it cut off for me. Can you okay. just recap real quick? Yeah, yeah. So um, they have a monthly meeting where you can go and meet all the doulas. So I went uh, to the meeting with my husband. Uh, all the doulas kind of introduced themselves. They talked about their experience, just how much experience they have, um, shared a little bit. Then they all answered some questions. Um, so at the end of the meeting, I said to my husband, is there anybody you don't want me to go pursue a relationship with? So he kind of noted a few people that he just didn't feel like he was going to jive with, which was important to me because, you know, he's obviously my biggest support person. Sure, um, yeah. And then I said, okay, well, I liked these people. So I went and I uh, talked to them and I talked to the director um, and she said, why don't you give me a call? So I called her and she said, what's important to you? Um, and she said, some people, um, if they're Christians, want a Christian doula. Some people want doulas who really enjoy natural births. Some people want doulas who have experience with high risk pregnancies, whatever, you know, is going on with them. And I said, I think having, you know, being a Christian, I think having a Christian doula would definitely be something I'd be interested in. Um, cause for me, then there's like that foundation of, okay, they're going to understand if my husband and I are praying in response to, you know, say the doctor comes in and says something or the midwife says something and, you know, it's troubling we're going to pray first. Um, and I would want someone who would understand that. So that was a big deal to me. Um, so from there, she gave me a few names and because I was so last minute, I really didn't have a great amount of flexibility. Um, but it was, it was fine. I still got a doula that I I liked. Uh, we met, um, I think when I was 36 weeks pregnant, went over how to make a birth plan, things I could put in a birth plan, which was really educational to me. Like, (laughs) um, as much as I love to study things for whatever reason, I didn't think to study the actual process of birth. And I don't know if that's because it was a little bit intimidating, like as a first time mom, like what's it going to be like? Do I want to learn a whole lot (laughs) and risk kind of freaking myself out? Or do I want to just kind of go with the flow? Um, But whenever I talked to her, I realized there was all this stuff that I could do to make labor more comfortable for myself. Like she said, uh, do you like, do you like having the lights on? And I was like, actually, no, I keep the lights off in my house until it's like eight o'clock at night. <laughs> and then I turn them on. Um, so she's like, so you might want to labor in natural light. I said, yeah, definitely. Oh my goodness. I didn't know I can make, you know, my hospital room this much, this comfortable, you know, to me. Um, so we made that plan together. She helped me write it up. 
Um, and then what actually happened with my doula, which was really random and probably won't happen to anyone else, um, is my doula texted me. I had been going through prodromal labor, which is like fake labor. You get contractions. They hit that 511 pattern five minutes apart, one minute in length um, for an hour, but then they would stop. So I'd have this happen to me for like six hours a night. <laughs> so it oh felt God. like I could go into labor any minute. Um, and my doula texts me one morning, I think it was the beginning of my 39th week of pregnancy. And she says, Hey, I'm sick. If you go into labor today, um, you know, I can't be, your, I can't be your doula because I'm sick and I don't want to be with you and risk getting you or your baby sick. Um, she's like, here's the doula that's on call tonight. And here's the doula that's on call tomorrow. Um, and I'll let you know, you know, tomorrow how I'm feeling. So she, I say, okay, because <laughs> what else do you do? I'm like, I'll just go with the flow. Yeah. Um, and so she texts me and says, hey, so I got tested and I have flu type A. So if you give birth in the next week or two, I'm not gonna be able to be your doula. I was like, all right, so I picked you, we met, we talked, but it's gonna be fine. <laughs> I was honestly surprised with how well my very pregnant self handled that. So she hooked me up with who was my eventual doula, Becky. Um, and it was honestly for me, Again, you know, I'm a Christian, so for me, this was a God thing, not just a coincidence. I called, she and I got on the phone, we talked a little bit. Um, I shared that I was a Christian, she shared that she was too. She actually sort of knows my pastor, um, so she's familiar with like the exact, you know, Christian beliefs that I have in terms of details. So I'd shared with her some things that were really important to me, faith wise, and she was totally on the same page. So it kind of turned out like, it was almost as though I had spent the time and the effort to find the doula that was right for me, but she just got dropped in my lap. <laughs> so yeah. I would highly recommend anyone else like interview multiple doulas if you can, talk to them about those things that are important to you. Um, you know, who else you want in the room, talk to them about the types of comfort measures you like, how you deal with pain, um, important spiritual beliefs or lack of spiritual beliefs. Um, but I think personality is also a good thing because yeah, you just want sure. someone that you're going to jive with. Like they're going to see you at your most vulnerable. You probably ever, anyone other than your spouse will ever see you. So I think it's really important that you have like a level of comfortability with them, just like a, an, a natural ability to trust. And I think we've all experienced that. Like when you meet a friend, like a new friend, you're like, you're a person I can trust. I think your relationship with your doula should be kind of like that. Not that you have to be best friends, but that you have to have that natural comfortability. Um, and just, I don't know, sort of like a, that similar feeling that you get whenever yeah. you do meet someone who's going to be a friend. I think so. What I like that you brought up, and I think that that's something that not a lot of people know is just the relationship that you actually start to mm -hmm. create with your doula before the birth. So this isn't mm -hmm. just somebody that you hire and comes into the room when you, you know, go into labor and you've never met them before and they're just there to help you. This yeah. is more somebody that you choose in advance and right. they essentially kind of work with you in creating mm -hmm. your birth plan or your birth vision on like what, even just like the questions that you were saying that she was asking you on, um, you know, how do you feel most comfortable? Because that's going to be the things that are going to help her not only make suggestions mm -hmm. ahead of time, but in the mm -hmm. moment, mm -hmm. remember that about you and remember, right. you know, what, what are your things that you need and, um, like what are things that help you to feel safe and, you know, mm -hmm. what are those things that help you to feel, um, you know, the most calm and mm -hmm. because when you're in, you know, it's so important that in your birth experience that you're not anxious and that you're not fearful. And so, okay, what are the things that help you not to feel that way so that we can mm -hmm. create that kind of atmosphere so that, um, so that, that so that's really, that's really interesting. All right. Yeah, will you just exactly. share just kind of an overview of your birth with Joseph and how, and I guess like specifically how um, working with a doula, like even just looking back was like, I'm, you know, I know that I had a really supportive husband, but I'm also glad that I had this yeah. doula work together in advance. So yeah. what was the actual birth like working with a doula? Yeah. So I mentioned I was having prodromal labor, that fake labor that literally lasted for like three weeks. It was insane. Um, I loved having a doula because I didn't have to call my midwife and be like that mom. Every single time I thought I was in labor, I would text my doula first and I'd be like, hey, this is how I'm feeling, um, but I don't know if it's real. And so she'd suggest some stuff to do. A lot of the stuff that the, the midwives will suggest anyways, which is drink some water, uh, lay down, or if you're already laying down, get up and walk around and see what happens. Um, so she would give me that advice first so I didn't have to call <laughs> the hospital every single time I thought I was in labor. Um, and then she also gave me like positioning advice, um, which 
I don't know. This is one of the things where it's like maybe maybe it helped, maybe it didn't, but it made me feel better. Like I, I felt it like I was doing that you felt like you were able to do. Yeah. yeah. So she was able to recommend some positioning that I could do really easily, really gentle stuff um, at my home while I was experiencing those contractions, so to say. Um, and that was really helpful to me because it just, again, made me feel like I was doing something. It actually helped relieve a little bit of like the like the pressure that I was feeling. It helped baby get into a little bit better of a position. Um, so that was really that was cool that I had that support ahead of time, because that's something that a lot of midwives aren't trained in um is those types of positions or if they are you know they have so many other patients they're rounding they're, they don't really have time to sit there on the phone with you and be like all right you can try this you get in this position and da 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 da, da. Sure. um so i liked that then the morning that okay so i had prodromal labor i reached a breaking point on a friday night where my husband came home and i was just in tears like i just want this baby to come and he's like it's gonna be okay um he will come out and i'm like i know but i want him now so <laughs> Um, so I, was, I had a moment with myself where I said, Abigail, calm down. You are fine. Your baby will come out. He's not going to stay in there forever. Just breathe. And tonight, don't count anything. Like you already know you've been going through fake labor. Stop counting. Stop timing things. Just relax. Enjoy your night and breathe. So I went to a church event, came home, watched a movie with my husband. Um, and the next morning I woke up uh, around like 6 a.m., and just kind of felt like pain in my back. And I was like, man, I haven't been pain my whole pregnancy and it would start now. <laughs> so I was like, okay, maybe I just slept funny. So I got up, went to the bathroom, went back to bed, woke up an hour and a half or two hours later, my back hurt again. And I was like, man, what in the world did I do? So I went, I was like, maybe, you know, my bed just isn't comfortable. I am 39, almost 40 weeks right now. So I went downstairs to my couch, was laying on my couch. And while I was laying on the couch, I tried to go back to sleep, but then I woke up again. I like, started to fall asleep and woke up because there was pain in my back. And I was like, is this, is this constant or is this intermittent? And I suddenly realized that the pain wasn't constant. It was coming and going. Um, so I was like, all right, this is different. Um, so I tried not to get too excited. I actually said, don't get too excited. Your body's done this before. Like, stay calm. So I told myself, wait two hours. And if you're still having this by 10 o'clock, you can start timing them. So I put on a movie, just tried to like, again, relax. I, I sat on, um, I had like a, like an exercise ball I sat on and bounced on just to try and help encourage labor um, and also just get more comfortable. It's really good for like, if you do feel pressure on your back to sit on something like a birthing ball. Um, and so I sat on that ball and two hours later, I was definitely still feeling them. They definitely felt like they had a pattern. I was so excited. Uh, so I texted my mom and I texted my doula and I told them what was going on. Um, I said, I'll keep you updated, but I really feel like for real this time, <laughs> <laughs> this could be it because it's different and everyone always said um you'll know it when it comes because it'll be different than than the fake contractions um so i what did i do then so um i started timing them i got in the shower because i knew that going in the shower could help encourage labor and i also knew that um getting water on your back can help relieve some of that back pain if that's where you're feeling it and i really only felt my contractions in my back um i was aware of them I was aware that it was a tightening around my whole stomach, but the pain, actual pain was only in the back. Um, so I went into my bedroom actually to tell my husband, hey, I think I'm in labor. And he goes, I think I'm gonna go get a haircut. And I was like, well, I don't want him to not get a haircut. So I said, okay. <laughs> and I let my husband go get a haircut. And he's like, do you want me to pick up lunch on my way home? I'm like, yeah, sure. And then he left and I was like, all right, we'll just, I'm still not 100 percent sure, so I'll wait. So, um, in the time that he was gone in his haircut, they started to establish a more and more of a pattern, get closer and closer together. <laughs> um, um, so I started to get really confident that I was in labor. Um, so around noon that day, I called my midwives and I said, "Hey, this is what I'm feeling. They're five one one, five minutes apart, one minute in, in length uh, for an hour." Um, and they said, "Okay, how do they feel like intensity wise?" I said, "I definitely have to, you know." focus and breathe, but it's not so bad that I can't walk around or I can't do anything. They're like, okay, so you can come in now if you want to, or you can wait and come in when they get a little bit more intense. They said, it's totally up to you. So that was so exciting for me because I called and they said, wait so many times. And finally they were like, you can come in. I'm like, All right. This is, this is real. This is today. So I texted my mom and told her that I texted my doula and told her that, um, but I still didn't tell my husband because he actually was teaching guitar lessons. <laughs> In the afternoon, he had two guitar lessons, so he was going to be teaching for an hour. And I was like, well, I didn't tell him early enough to really cancel. 
and it's not that bad that I have to go to the hospital, so I'll just wait. So my husband comes home, and I'm not telling him anything. I'm just like, if he's talking to me during a contraction, I'm just sort of nodding, like, mm -hmm, and not saying anything because I'm focusing. Um, so he does his lessons, and after the lessons, I go into the bedroom, and he goes, so I think I'm in labor for real. And he goes, really? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm so excited. And he says to me, you don't really seem like you're in enough pain. <laughs> and I'm like, well, they definitely hurt. So I can promise you that. So he kind of like grilled me a little bit because he was really afraid of going to the hospital and getting sent home, which I understand. Um, I'm like, no, it definitely hurts. I said, we don't have to go right now, but we should head that direction. Like, let's load up the car. Um, I need you to do a few things for me. I need you to like I needed him to load the dishwasher and like one or two other things that I just knew I didn't want to come home and like feel like I had to do after giving birth. Um, so around four o'clock, I think we finally went like, to the I'm in labor and I just like really need you to do the dishes, please. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I was like, okay, I have a list of things I need you to do. And by this point, you know, they're definitely painful, but I'm, I'm tolerating them pretty well. Um, so in between contractions, I'm fine. I'm talking and laughing sure. and moving around, but then, you know, I did like my face, which is so dumb. It's like doing your doing your makeup before a workout, but it just made me feel better. So I did my oh, I did oh, like sure. a and little like, bit of makeup. I think people there's like the difference between there's labor and then there's active labor. So I think sometimes people think that like as soon as I have a contraction, that like we this whole thing could be like over. And, and you know there are right. special cases, but um, there is a a pretty significant period of time that you can labor at home. Yeah. And you have contractions, but you're able to function in between yeah. those things, which is just once you go, once you go through it, you, you realize that. But yeah, um, I love that you took some time to be like, okay, like I can, what can, what can I focus on? I can't like, I'm doing everything I can to kind of speed this along, but there are just some things that I know that I'm going to want to have like mm -hmm. the way that I want them when I come home or what's going to make me feel good right now. So I like, yeah, to well, it's that. all about. Well, it was definitely all about like making it an experience for me that like any possible negative thought I was having, like, oh, but there's the dishes aren't done at home, like, or oh, I look like crap in my in my pictures I take afterward. Like those little things I know would like as stupid as it sounds and as much as you're totally distracted by labor, for me, I would have been thinking about them and stressing about them. <laughs> and stress can slow labor down. So I was just trying to do anything that I could to relax, to enjoy it, as you know, again, as much as I possibly could. Enjoy labor. So we left, we left for the hospital at around four. Um, and they're, again, they're pretty intense. Like I have to really like, I'm breathing and I'm focusing, um, but I'm able to do it really like calmly. So I was having contractions in the car, but my husband actually checked with me. He's like, have you had contractions since you've been in the car? I'm like, yeah, I've had like two. And he says, okay, just checking. So I'm like watching funny videos on my phone, trying to distract myself from the pain <laughs> all the way to the hospital because sitting in the car is not the most comfortable thing to do when you're in labor. So we get there, we get checked in, um, we get taken back to a triage room and unfortunately they're super, super busy that day. So it took us like 45 minutes to be seen by anybody, which is a little bit stressful because you're in this tiny room, there's not a lot of room to move around and they have you hooked up to like, because it is, I was in the hospital, they have you hooked up to like a blood pressure thing and they're checking your oxygen, they're checking baby to make sure everybody's okay. Um, so finally when the midwife comes into the room, she's talking to me and I'm talking to her and we're talking about how they feel and she's like, all right, well, let's check you. Um, so she checks me and she honestly, the way she was talking to me was like, you're not really in labor, honey. Like it had that kind of tone to it really subtly. Um, but that was uh, amplified by the fact that whenever she did check me, she went, oh, she's like, you're like five centimeters dilated. She's like, you're handling this really well. I'm like, thank you, I guess. <laughs> um, so she's like, okay. She says, so we would call, the midwives would call six active labor. She says, but I'm really confident that you're heading that direction. Um, so we're going to go ahead and admit you. She said, you can go home if you want. I'm like, no, I'm good. Like, I'm here. Let's stay. Um, so... Uh, they got me hooked up to a monitor, and at that point, I called called my doula on the phone, and that's a big deal. Whenever you're in labor, you need to call your doula because she might not see a text. <laughs> I called her, and I said, hey, we're checked in. We're ready for you to come join us. Um, I could have asked my doula to come join me at any point during the day, and she would have. Like, if I wanted her to come to my house, uh, she would have done that, but um, we wanted to make sure that we were definitely in labor so we weren't going to have to call her in and send her home and call her in and send her home. Um, yeah. And I was doing fine. So I think if I would have been, if I wouldn't have been tolerating the beginning of labor as well, if it would have been something more intense, 
um, for me like to experience than maybe I would have called her. But because it was going well, um, I figured I'll just wait until I know for sure and get her there for the hard part. <laughs> um, so she showed up about an hour later and I was still in triage, which was not fun. <laughs> um, but she, it, once she got there, everything got better. Um, I felt myself like physically relax when she got there. Um, so she said, do you want to get up? And I'm like, yes. Cause at that point I was just sitting on the bed in this exact position that I knew was tolerable cause I didn't want to ruin it and like get into a position that's going to hurt more. Um, so she says, do you want to get up? I said, yes. She says, do you want um, a birthing ball or anything? I said, yes, definitely. I love sitting on my ball at home. And that was actually one of the positions she had suggested to me when I said, I think I'm in labor. She said, you can try hands and knees. You can try leaning over the tub or the toilet. You can try sitting on a birthing ball, um, just some different positions that people find more comfortable. And the ball was my favorite. So she got the birthing ball. She, because she knows the hospital and a lot of experienced doulas will know the hospitals or the birthing centers well enough that they can just go get stuff. And the people there know them well enough they can just go get stuff. She just went, got a hospital gown, got a ball, covered the uh, the ball with the hospital gown, had me sit down, um, which was just so great to be so taken care of. Like I could have asked for a ball, but I wouldn't have known to ask for a hospital gown. And I wouldn't have known how to like tie it around it so that it stayed on there on my own. Um, and then she said, where do you feel most of the pain? I said, it's right in my back. And I pointed. So she started doing this maneuver where she put her fist on my back during the contraction and just pressed in really hard. Um, and then when the contraction was over, I would tell her and we would both relax. Um, and from, it was all relatively tolerable to that point, but with her help, it became so easy. Like I was like, this is so easy. I could do this part of labor all day. Um, so I would just let her know when I felt the contraction coming and she'd put her fist on my back and press. Um, eventually we switched to a different one, but also something that relieves some pressure on my back. And finally <laughs> we got switched to a, um, an official like labor room, which was so exciting. So it was like real. Also at this point, my husband actually had left, which was one of the cool things about having a doula, um, was that I had that support person. So he yeah. didn't need to be there. So he was more able to take care of himself. So we had lunch at like, uh, noon and it was now 8 eight thirty, and my husband hadn't had dinner um so he's like I think I need to go get some food I said yeah go for it like there's stuff within walking distance just go get something I'm not you know I'm not imminently going to have the baby you're going to be fine so he leaves to go get food we get moved to this new room um and once he returned again it was like I just reached this whole new level of relaxation with the process and I felt it like kick up a year um so there's this there's this like theory about labor where um, labor can't progress if you feel like any kind of tension or stress. And for me, being in the hospital with my doula, with my husband, was the environment that I felt most comfortable in. So I relaxed and I could tell because it was once I hit that room, that labor kicked in for me like intensely. I think it was like maybe 10 minutes after he returned, my water broke. Um, I had set up my, I felt prepared because I set up like my visual, I don't know what you call it, like focal points. Mm -hmm. On the wall across from the bed, I had um, a picture I got at Hobby Lobby with a Bible verse on it. Um, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you. Um, and that for me was my reminder. If, if you know anything goes anything less than perfect, read that verse, refocus, know that it's going to be okay. Um, and then I had an ultrasound picture of my baby to remind me why I was doing what I was doing. So I had those up. My doula had put on um, some essential oils. I picked a scent that I liked in the moment. Because um, sometimes people think they like a scent and they don't in labor. <laughs> so I picked one I liked. We had the lights dim. Um, I had my husband put on some music that I liked. Mm -hmm. um, and again, once all that was together, that's when my water broke, I think around like 9, 930. Um, I said this, I said, oh, and I think my water broke. And then you heard splash. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was honestly, I think when I started, I felt a little bit uncomfortable about that because I didn't know about labor that your water kind of keeps leaving you for the duration of, of labor. I thought it was kind of like break and you're done. Um, so I didn't realize that. Uh, but again, my doula was so prepared. Um, she knew where things were. She knew how to help me. She saw that I was visibly uncomfortable with the fact that like water was coming out. Um, so she got like the little like mesh underwear that they give you after labor. And she got like a pad and we made like, <laughs> it's so embarrassing to say, but like basically like a little diaper to like catch the water, um, which made me feel so much more comfortable. So yeah. her seeing the discomfort I was facing, finding a way to fix it and just moving into action. I didn't have to ask her. I didn't have to say like, this is really uncomfortable. Can we do anything? Like 
you know, she was trained, she knew what to do, she knew how to help me, she'd helped women do this before, she just moved. Um, so at this point things got like much, much more intense and I stopped being able to talk kind of during or in between contractions. I was very focused, very much focusing on my breathing, very much, um, my doula was rubbing my ball with the, my ball, rubbing my back with um, these like massaging balls in between oh. contractions and then she would do, um, it's called a hip squeeze during the contraction. Um, and it was making it again tolerable, but it was really getting intense at this point. And I was starting to, and this is where I think I would change my mentality for the next time. I was starting to worry about what the pain was going to be. Um, honestly, I expected all of labor to feel like that moment. So I was glad that it waited that long to happen. Um, yeah. But I started to wonder, can I handle this if it gets worse? Can I handle this for multiple more hours? Um, so finally, the midwife comes in, and this is the midwife that I know best. She comes in, it's her shift, um, and she checks me, and she says, okay, you're seven to eight centimeters right now. And it was funny because I had said if I was seven, I would get an epidural, and if I was eight, I wouldn't. <laughs> so I really had to just go with my heart on that one. <laughs> and I said, I paused, and I thought about it, and I said, you know what? I'm not doing this for, like, any kind of metal or anything. If I feel like I'm, I'm struggling I think I'm at the point where I can get it. Um, Cause I'd also heard that the later that you get an epidural, the better it is. Um, like if you can get it around eight centimeters um, to do it then, because then your body is done like the hard part of labor and you're like way less likely to have labor stall, which sometimes can happen with epidurals. So um, I got the epidural. I think it came in around, they came in to give it to me around 10 30 and it was in at 11. Um, I thought that would be super scary, but you're just so, focused on labor and the pain of labor and the process that everything that freaked me out about epidurals did not freak me out in that moment. <laughs> I was like, oh, fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm really freaked out. But like even thinking back, I'm like, ew, they let, I let them do that. <laughs> but in the moment I didn't care. Um, so I, you know, I held my husband's hands and they gave me the epidural. Um, but the thing was for me, right before I got the epidural, my, um, I started to feel that urge to push. Um, and I, that was actually the feeling I didn't like. It was part of the reason that I wanted the epidural. So I didn't like that feeling. I wanted it to go away. As it turned out, it did not go away. And instead of feeling like totally pain-free and totally whatever, I felt only the urge to push. And it was so intense, um, more intense than anything I think I've ever experienced. And once again, my doula saw that I was like struggling not to push because they told me I couldn't push because I wasn't ready. Um, and so she was got down by, you know, by where my head was on the bed and like, Helped me breathe through it. She taught me, you know, how to like do like the short breaths so that you don't accidentally kind of just push with the urge. Um, she gave me a, a peanut ball to help kind of, it just sort of is a way to help your body stay open um, instead of just being all closed off in the bed. Um, what else do we do? Okay, so I, I was on the epidural for about an hour when finally they come in and they say, okay, we're ready to push. Um, that was just this totally surreal moment. It was amazing. Um, and my, I said to my husband, put on this one specific song. I said, if I'm pushing for a long time, switch it to this one. But I think this one will be fine. Um, and then I, I, I pushed. I pushed for about 20 minutes. Um, normally with epidurals, you have to kind of do coach pushing because you can't feel as much. But I could feel the urge to push very clearly. So I was able to just kind of push whenever I felt like pushing. Um, and yeah, 20 minutes later, my son was born and I put him on my chest and it was just like the absolute happiest, craziest moment of my entire life. <laughs> That's amazing. What, um, what do you feel like, I mean, obviously she, your doula played such an important role during the birth process and really just kind of like allowed, like allowed your husband to just kind of be there with you instead of doing all the running around. Like you had somebody else who was like, you know, getting what you needed and, yeah. and things like that and kind of allowed him to be more more present and not have that pressure to be mm. everything that you, you know, needed, you know, yeah. both relationally and like support wise. Yeah. Um, what was her role after Joseph was born? Did she stay? Did she leave? Um, I don't know if that was mm -hmm. something you decided ahead of time. Like once the baby's here, does she stick around or what's right. that like after the baby's born? Yeah. So one of the things that doulas can do is help you get started with um, breastfeeding mm -hmm. um, because you usually can't get a lactation counselor in like in the middle of the night <laughs> when I had Joseph. Um, he was born at 12, 21 in the morning. Um, so you, they're able to kind of help coach you through that. They're, they're not like, you know, an IBCLC or something, um, but they are 
trained. So they understand breastfeeding basics and can kind of just help you get started. So she was going to stay for that part. And also just to make sure that we got our golden hour, which was in our, our birth, uh, birth plan. Um, you know, and in case anything were to happen, just to be there for support. Um, she, can you explain real quick what the golden hour is to somebody who might not know what that means? Yeah, so the golden hour is the first hour after the baby's born. It's uh, really important for bonding. Um, and so what they do is they put the baby on your chest instead of wrapping it up in blankets, instead of worrying about measurements or shots or you know ointment or whatever else they want to do the baby. It's just you and the baby for the first hour. All the checks that they do, like the APGAR scores and stuff, are done while baby's on your chest with you. They don't take you apart for that whole hour. Um, it's actually a really good hormonal thing. It helps you release like the right hormones to um, to breastfeed. It's like so it's the way the body works is like it's amazing. Like <laughs> even just like motherhood being just like something you were born to do. It's like yeah. really, um, really fascinating to me. Okay, so you got your golden hour, and mm -hmm. then what was um, what was the process after that? So um, I actually was unaware that she was doing this, even though I knew, I knew she was going to. She took pictures of us for like throughout that whole first hour, pictures and videos. So I have all these like really special um, just photos and videos of me and my husband interacting with our son for the first time. She just took them on her iPhone. She was totally you know, non-obtrusive. Like we barely knew she was there doing it. So um, she really stayed out of our way. Um, but still helped us like make the most of that moment. She asked me if I wanted anything to drink um, at kind of a good moment where there's a little bit of a pause. Like I wasn't totally focused on the baby. Um, you know, she asked like, are you warm enough? Do you have, you know, she just made sure I had what I needed. Um, and she stayed all the way through until I was more or less ready to go um, up to the, you know, the recovery room or whatever they call it, the room that you're in for the rest of your hospital stay. Okay. Um, for you, the midwife mm -hmm. only came in and helped with the delivery. So More the doula was really the one who was helping you with everything else. Um, Cause I've heard other different experiences where the midwife was helping you with, you know, breastfeeding for the first time and all of that. But be it was it because you had a doula or was it because the way that the midwives work at the hospital is just different than maybe yeah. other hospitals or birthing centers or a home birth. Um, I just found that interesting that the midwife mm -hmm. was only there just for the birth. And then the yeah. doula did everything else. That's really hard for me to say just because it only kind of did one. Um, but I think I think my night at the hospital was very busy, like because it took me so long to get a room. So I think she just had a lot of other uh, uh, patients. And I think when midwives especially know that a patient has a doula, they know that they don't have to be that person for them. You know, yeah. um, I think if I wouldn't have had a doula, she might have spent a little bit more time, helped me with a little bit more of the comfort measures because, um, you know, midwives are trained in comfort measures usually anyways. Um, so I think she would have maybe spent a little bit more time with me that way, but I think having a doula let her kind of go do her job and know that I was taken care of. For sure. Um, will you share just a little bit? I know that going through this experience and working with a doula really kind of inspired you in more ways than one. Um, and so I know you've talked about you are now trained as a doula. Can you just talk about like, was there anything, you know, when you talk about like why I just, why you decided to get trained as a doula, what was it? Was it just the overall experience of like what birth was that you thought it couldn't be and you thought it was better because of her? Like what, yeah. can you just like share what was it about working with a doula that was so amazing that you were yeah. like, I actually want to do this for other women. Yeah. I give so much of the credit from, to the birth experience that I had to my doula. Um, and I think using a doula changed the way that, I'm so sorry, my baby's fine. No, it's totally fine. <laughs> Not the <Okay>. first. <laughs> I'm good. Oh, <laughs> I'm good. It's more distracting to me. Um, so my mom heart. Okay. Um, oh my goodness. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so, um, so having a doula. It was, so she, she also changed, having a doula changed my mentality toward birth, where I kind of saw it as like, you know, just this thing that, that women go through and they have a baby and that's the ultimate end goal. But for me, through the experience, I realized that having a baby um, and the training I took talked about it is like a rite of passage. It's like this way that like women experience the fullness of everything that their body can do, like everything it was made for. Um, and you know, at the risk of being controversial with everything that's going on today, like, I think sometimes 
women feel like ashamed of being a woman or feel like, oh, I'm a woman's and I have to fight to be, you know, all these other things. I have to kind of like buck the trend and, uh, you know, I have to be a, a working mom. Or I have to be a whatever, you know, I need to try and be successful in all these other ways that they, you know, forget about the amazing thing that their bodies can can do just naturally. Like that's something that's so unique to women that, you know, they're created specifically for. And when you let it happen, it can be a really natural thing. Like whether you have an epidural or not, like it's a natural thing that your body does um, to create and grow and, and birth that baby is it's just amazing. Um, so going through that process and realizing everything that my body can do and feeling so empowered, like I felt like I was queen of the world <laughs> afterwards. I felt amazing and I felt so, I felt like the most myself I've ever felt. It was like a weird sort of enlightenment <laughs> afterwards. And I'm like, man, I want other women to have this experience. I don't want other women to, you know, cause there are a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, negative things that you can hear about birth or the way women are treated during birth. Um, so if I feel like if I could be a help to someone else to give them anywhere near the experience that I had, that would be just an absolutely amazing thing to be able to give to them the chance to feel empowered, the chance to help them feel at least a little bit in control of something that's so uncontrollable, you know, as birth. So yeah, just, I would love to be able to give that sense of empowerment back to other women to help them through their birth and just make it a wonderful experience. I, I, I hate the fact that anybody can look back at their birth experience and be like, oh, that was terrible. Or like, oh, I wish this would have gone differently. Or I would have known this um, to not have had all the education that they needed. And that's really a great role, role that doulas play as well as education. For sure. I love that you brought up in the beginning when you were talking about, um, you know, when it came to educating yourself about birth and and doing doing the research and, and doing the research even early how you just had that natural reaction of like, do I even want to know? Like, do I even mm -hmm. want to know? Like, is it better? And I think that's a that's the number one thing um, that I heard even prior to starting this and just mm -hmm. having these conversations is that a lot of a lot of women don't fully do the research because they're afraid of what they're. It's almost like that. Um, like defense mechanism of like what I don't know is not going to scare me. So like mm -hmm. if I just don't look into the possibilities and I just trust my team, I trust my doctors and whatever happens happens and they'll make sure that I'm safe no matter what. Yeah. And then I often like here looking back, you know, mom's telling their story of like, I wish that I had just that I had done the research because if I had, when I was in this sort of scenario, I could have had more control about what I wanted and Looking back, I didn't know that they were suggesting this, but it also meant that this wouldn't happen or whatever the case scenario would be. So yeah. I think that working with what from what I've learned, working with a doula just opens up like you're not like researching completely on your own. Like you're mm -hmm. working with somebody who becomes, you know, kind of like that that big sister role in a lot of ways of like been there, done that. Yeah. This is, you know, things that have worked for me. This is things that have worked for other women. Mm -hmm. um, and just having that. So you don't feel like you're alone in figuring yeah. out what you want to do and, and what you want your birth plan to look like. Um, yeah. Just to kind of wrap up, is there anything looking back over your birth experience other than I know you mentioned that you would have um, chosen your doula earlier, mm -hmm. um, but was there anything else looking back over your birth experience that if somebody who is expecting or hopes to be expecting soon, if you could give them one piece of overall advice of maybe something that you wish that you had done differently or you wish you had known that you know mm -hmm. now that you would love to be able to share, you mm -hmm. know, obviously, I know working with a doula is like our big thing that we would share today, but like anything yeah. other than that that you could share with maybe a, an expecting mom? Um, so I actually did a lot more of the research about birth after I gave birth and I wish I would have done it before. Um, so I did it after as like, wow, that was amazing. I want to learn more about it. Um, but I think if I would have done it before, I could have entered the experience even more hopeful and even more excited, uh, than I already was. So, um, for me, two of my like favorite books that I've read since then have been, um, Unamazed Guide to Childbirth, which I know a lot of people have referenced, yep. um, just amazing stories about what women's bodies can do. Um, and The Birth Partner by Penny Simpkin. Um, okay. I don't know if anyone's mentioned that one before, uh, but that one really outlines a little bit more of kind of like what a doula or any support person could do. So if you're kind of like, oh, I'm not sure, like, I'm not sure if a doula is right. I'm not sure if I need that. I have a really supportive spouse. I have my mom, I have whatever. 
um, it's it's a really good guide of like here are things that doulas try, here are the ways that doulas can advocate for their clients, help them make informed decisions. So if you're not quite ready to make that that leap, it's kind of a nice like middle ground kind of book to either help you decide to make the leap or equip whoever's with you to kind of occupy a little bit more of that space. So definitely I would I would have read more. I would have read, yeah, The Birth Partner and Anime's Guide to Childbirth for sure. I love that. I'll link, um, I know the um, everyone links to Anime, um, her her book. So, um, but I'll link to both of those in, in the comments. And then if you're listening to the podcast version, I'll link to those in the show notes. Um, so you, Abigail, are trained to be a doula. So what would be, I mean, somebody could be watching live right now. Somebody could be watching this in three months, six months. Um, so what would... Um, if somebody is local, cause you're local to the Pittsburgh area. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if we, I guess we said your network was here, but you're local to the Pittsburgh area. So if somebody wanted to learn more about working with you as a doula who lives in the Pittsburgh area, what's the best way for them to contact you? Is it by email or, um, website or what, what's the best way for, how are you, how, how are you, um, booking the moms that, that you work with? Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm probably actually going to work with, um, a doula group. Uh, but I haven't solidified the details on that. So for now, if you want to, you can just send me a DM. Uh, my name's Abigail Condon um, on Instagram. If you send me a DM, I can send you wherever the right place <laughs> to be in since it's something I'm still working on. Yeah, for sure. And I will, um, for those listening, if you're on the podcast episode, I'll link it in the show notes. And um, if you're watching the video, I'll go ahead and put it in the notes as well, just so that um, you can link right to it. Um, just in case anybody, you know, sometimes I think even just somebody who was able to listen to your story and your conversation. I think that builds trust a lot. So mm-hmm. if anybody was watching and, and just wanted to learn more, um, either working with you or working with somebody um, that you'd recommend, but yeah, thank you so much for hopping on and sharing your story. I think so much of what you shared just kind of really clarified, uh, the role of a doula mm-hmm. and just, you know, we were talking even before we officially went live on just, mm-hmm. there's just so many, stereotypes when it comes to midwives and doulas in general. But I think Mm -hmm. it was, I think it's important for people to know, like you were even saying how you can have a doula. If you plan on having an epidural, you can work Mm -hmm. with a doula. If you are going to have a C-section, you can work with that. It's more a doula is having birth support and and just people. I think it was really important that you shared that that's available. And Mm -hmm. because sometimes I think that people don't know that that's available. Um, Yeah. You know, whether you know, whatever your birth experience is. Yeah. So, and just if I can real quickly with regard to uh, C-sections, because I know some people maybe have had a C-section before uh, and you want to do a feedback or you know that you're going to go in for a repeat C-section, like doulas can absolutely support you through either of those options. Um, Because it's not just about like physical support measures or making the room the right way. It's like, how can we make your C-section, that's what you're doing, um, the best possible experience. Can we ask for skin to skin right away? Is that something your hospital does? And they'll help you approach that conversation with your provider. They can help you ask for options. They can help educate you on um, different types of C-sections, which is a weird topic to get into, but um, and just encourage you educationally to like advocate for yourself and to make that an experience that you can be happy with and proud of just as much as if you, know, you gave birth vaginally. So, yeah, no, I love that. that. And actually... I guess I knew that you could work with a doula, whether it was hospital or home. Um, but I actually never even thought about working with a doula for a C-section. And mm-hmm. I guess that would always be part, that would be part of your birth plan of, you know, this is my ideal scenario, but if we were to have a C-section and mm-hmm. even just kind of going over with your doula, what's going to be important to you yep. no matter what, and having somebody that fights in your corner yep. or if you had an unexpected C-section, what were the things that were really important to you after and making sure those still happen, like the skin to skin um, yep. and those sort of things. So that's, that's really amazing. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I loved hearing your story. And I, um, if anybody is listening to this um, after it's recorded, if you have um, questions about what working with a doula is like that we didn't answer. If you want to learn more, um, I would love for you to write it in the comments or, or send us an email because I would really love to bring more doulas on. And just, I think that um, even just learning, I know that there's postpartum doulas, there's doulas oh, yeah. that specialize in after the baby's here. And so I just think it's a really, um, a really interesting topic in and of itself, but I'm going to say goodbye for today and we will see you next week.